uh, when a superconductor is cooled down to a temperature below its critical temperature, its resistance or resistivity will suddenly drop to zero. Temperature, resistivity, and as at the critical temperature, the resistivity will suddenly drop to zero. And this critical temperature depends on the materials of the superconductor. Besides this interesting phenomenon, there's another phenomenon we call it perfect diamagnetism that will occur at the same time when the material is becoming superconducting. When temperature is above the TC, the material is still normal, it's not superconducting yet. And if you apply a B field, the B field will just go straight through it. Yeah. And as you cool down the material to a temperature below TC, it will become superconducting. And when it becomes superconducting, it will start to expel all the B field away from the materials. Like a perfect diamagnetic materials. In the demonstration today, I'm showing this phenomenon with a magnet and a superconductor. This superconductor is called a high TC superconductor made of bismuth, strontium, calcium, copper, and oxide. This is called high TC superconductor because the critical temperature of this material is above the boiling point of liquid nitrogen at about 90 degree K. Of course, right now, the superconductor is still at room temperature. So as I put this magnet, a neodymium rare earth magnet with a very strong magnetic field on the top of it, the magnetic field will just go straight through the superconductor and nothing will happen. So the magnet is just sitting at the top of the superconductor. And now, if I power liquid nitrogen into the petri dish, liquid nitrogen has a boiling point of 77K. And it will be boiling because the temperature is above the boiling point. And after some time, everything will be cooled down. When it's settled down, the superconductor, the Pisco will become a superconductor now because it is 77K now. And it is below the critical temperature of this superconductor. So if I put a magnet here, the magnetic field will not be able to penetrate into the material and they are being expelled and as a result the magnet is levitated and you can see this and it is really levitated not touching the superconductor The only thing between the magnet and the superconductor is the magnetic field lines. And they will be expelled from the superconductor. Uh, the reasons why it's stable and does not topple is because some of the field lines, a small amount of field lines, is actually has actually gone through the magnet, gone through the superconductor, and this field line will be pinned down or trapped by the impurities and defects in the superconductor, and as a result, the magnet is being held steady on the top at this position. To show the magnet is being held securely at this position, I'm going to take the superconductor out of the liquid nitrogen and move it around. Uh, as long as I'm not staying in air for too long, the superconductor is still very, very cold above the TC. So as I move around, you can see the magnet is following it, not being left behind, and it's actually quite stable. 
and before it falls back to the superconductor, I have, put, I have to put it back to the next hydrogen, so to, to keep the magnet being levitated.